welcome room. Uh, and the show is proudly brought to you by First Wine Bank, uh, Calvo Enterprises, and uh, IT&E, where we have the executive uh, director of the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority, uh, Ray Tapasnia. Uh, good morning, Ray. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. I guess this, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, there was the, the board had uh, awarded you guys, uh, due to your performance, a 4% uh, retro, you and the deputy, a 4% retroactive raise, I think going back to January. Uh, that the decision voted on and approved by the board, right? Well, uh, l- let me start by saying uh, I-, I think the board is getting a bad rap uh, for uh, the decision they made uh, last Friday at a board meeting. And and this board has been really, really professional in, in everything they do. No more secret meetings as what occurred in, in, a, in a previous administration. Uh, in fact, they've been uh, very professional and, uh, you know, the, the, the members of this board are, have reputations and reputations that are on the line. And uh, I want to thank them for the, the great work they've done since uh, being appointed by the governor. But, yeah, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the story that came out on the post uh, over the weekend and then even this morning uh, was not completely accurate. Uh, Gura is currently undergoing a, an audit by the Office of Public Accountability, by the OPA. Uh, and the audit is going to be released hopefully within the next week. Uh, I, I don't want to preempt uh, what the audit findings will be, uh, but it's an audit of the uh, similar to what uh, occurred at the port and the utility agencies. It's a, an audit of unclassified uh, positions, uh, specifically the director and deputy director. So uh, in our, during our exit interview with the OPA, uh, he, we spoke about um, specific concerns then they ha- that they had to ratifying um, personnel actions uh, uh, in connection to the director and deputy director, uh, which occurred over a length, uh, lengthy period, uh, I believe over the entire previous administration. Uh, so the concern by the OPA that was brought to our attention is that, uh, that uh, there were pay adjustments or salary increments in, in connection to uh, performance evaluations that were not ratified by the board. We wanted to clean that up in, in our administration and we've cleaned it up. My, my position and this is in full transparency for every performance evaluation, uh, the board is involved uh, and as well the deputy that did not occur in the previous administration. So we cleaned that up and as well, my performance evaluation is on Gura's website pursuant to law. And so everything has been above board and what we took to the board or what the board approved on Friday was the ratification. Basically they had to ratify two things in the, uh, based on our discussions with the OPA. And the first one was our performance evaluations. And this is uh, the performance uh, for the period of December or January, 2019 to to January, 2020. So it was pre COVID. So what the board had to ratify, or first of all, evaluate our, the director and deputy director and they did so, and then the board had to ratify it in a board meeting as well. The board had to um, ratify any personnel actions in connection to the performance evaluations. Again, these are this is for the period of 29 uh, January 2019 to January 2020. So it's pre-COVID. Unfortunately, because of COVID, none of these things were actually done uh, because, uh, you know, we had trouble having board meetings uh, until the executive order was clear how we were to do it uh, because we couldn't have a person to person contact and all of that stuff. So yes, we're about eight months late in getting the board to ratify, but of course the reporter didn't understand what what needed to occur and said, we got pay raises. I did not get a pay raise. My deputy didn't get a pay raise. Uh, my, I'm willing to share my paycheck up today and two months ago, and it's the same. Uh, Ray, uh, so let me, there let has me, been let no me, pay adjustment. Let me there cut in no here. Pay- Sorry, Ray. Uh, we're KUAM-FM, uh, Gatnia Guam. Uh, to our viewers on KUAM uh, TV, thanks so much for watching. 
Jump over to our KUM News uh, Facebook live feed where we'll continue our interview with uh, the Gore Executive Director, Ray Tapasino, who says, I did not put the Ray in raises. No raises were received. And so we'll continue with that interview uh, right here on the other side. Also, we're the Breeze 93.9 KUAM FM and Agatni Guam. Okay, we'll see you over here. Stajos. Bye. Hi. Welcome back. So, Ray, uh, you didn't get a raise, but you were going to, I, no. right? Well, y- you know, and if I can just share with you, Chris, it's very interesting. I become a political pawn in this in this uh, debate between the administration and uh, the Guam legislature, and the legislature is all, you know, uh, uh, politicking so that they can the, so that they can be reelected. And some of the comments that have come out in in recent days are are quite shocking to me because they're they're just blatant lies. And if I if I can just share with you, you know, one of the things that you guys uh, aired uh, yesterday, uh, Senator St. Augustine and Senator Therese Terlahi are, were saying nobody should get a pay raise across Gov Guam. And, you know, we're not supposed to be giving raises in the middle of these things. Uh, when Therese Terlahi said that, I, I'm, I presume she meant the pandemic. But, you know, it was the legislature that restored increments to Gov Guam back for FY20. So to say that no one should be getting a raise or no one should get, be getting a pay increment is completely false because they're the ones that restored the increment through the passage of the FY20 budget. In fact, all of Gov Guam continues unless we, we're directed through executive order and on, or unless a legis- the legislature passes the law, the entire government of Guam increments are still in place. Right, but... but- so, you know, yeah, the the the, the but, when you, when people are are <laughs> crying foul because Gura had put forth before the board just to ratify just to make sure that the paperwork is clear, but I didn't get a pay raise, mind you, but the but Gov Guam employees, you know, maybe ten thousand or more have received pay adjustments or uh, pay increments in, in connection to their performance evaluations if they got a satisfactory or higher than they received one. So I don't think that has been rescinded or that has been stopped via executive order or to be, uh, or via uh, uh, legislation. But it was the legislature, in fact, that restored increments via the passage of the budget bill. But and then, so all of Gov Guam continues to receive this and or not all, but everyone that has a performance evaluation and got satisfactory or higher. So to say that, you know, uh, we're giving out pay raises, at Gora, that's not true. Uh, and uh, during uh, difficult times, we recognize these are difficult times, and we house 4,882 families, and uh, we we recognize that many of them have been impacted by COVID. But, you know, to say that, uh, I mean, Senator um, uh, Taitigui said that, you know, some of this money should be applied towards the homeless population or Section 8 public housing. Well, you know, there's a reason why the governor didn't appoint uh Tello Taitigui to Gura because she, prob- she probably would run the operation right into the ground. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you that my salary doesn't come out of Section 8 or homeless programs or public housing. It comes out of a separate funding source, which is called the entitled the Cost Office, uh, Central Office Cost Center. And the, the money that's derived from that, uh, it, it comes from management fees for managing the Section 8 program, public housing program, and everything we do at Gura. And, and so I'm not able to tap from Section 8. I'm not able to tap from homeless programs uh, in order to pay my salary and vice versa. I'm not able to take the central office cost center and pay for the, for, you know, and apply it towards homeless programs. So, you know, there, again, there's a reason why she's not here. But she also mm. made a, a, a number of comments which are com- blatant lies. She said, I'm the highest paid director and my deputy is the highest paid deputy Oh, according to yeah, your media yeah. report, yeah. but I'm just clarify, Chris, and please mm. give me a, a moment yeah. here. Uh, 20 deputy directors or second assistants in Gov Guam make more than uh, than my deputy director. And that's everyone from the two port uh, deputies to mm. the airport deputy to GMAs to GCC, UOG, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically a lot of the deputy directors in the administration are highly overpaid is what you're trying to say. No, what I'm saying is to to for 
Senator Tello Taitugui to insinuate that the deputy is the highest paid in Gov mm. uh, It's not true when 20 of them, possibly more, I just did my research this morning, possibly more, I found 20 of them making more than the deputy. And eight uh, directors mm. or you know top positions throughout the, uh, whether it be the administration or just the autonomous agency, eight, eight, eight directors or top positions make more than I do. So to insinuate for Senator Tello Taitugui, again, it's election year, to say I'm the highest paid director, not true at all. That's a blatant lie, and I, I'll call her out on that. So you're so, top 10. But the bottom line, Chris, is we did not get a pay raise. The board has did what they thought was prudent based on our exit interview with the OPA because in the previous administration, there were, there were concerns that the board wasn't ratifying performance evaluations and wasn't ratifying personnel actions. So that's all we did. The reporter, when they wrote, when they ran the story uh, in the post, never asked me whether I whether the raises were going to take effect. They just ran the story. Yeah, yeah. So but they approved the pay raise, but you're not getting the pay raise. It's basically. I'm not getting state. a pay raise, and they did not approve a pay raise. They they approved the performance evaluations and the and their and the increments attached to that, but we did wait, not wait, process so it, they, nor do we... So they approved the what? raise that included the performance evaluation. I mean, it is what it is, Ray. They approved you to get a raise, and now you're not getting it. How does that make you feel, though? Because it sounds like you think you really deserve it. Well, I, it, it, you know, that's that doesn't matter. What matters is the way you guys are reporting it. it that way, I got a pay raise. I didn't get a pay raise, and I probably but, won't but, get a pay but, raise until until things stabilize and got one. Yeah. And that's a decision made yeah. uh, on on but, our part. But you know, the the stories that are coming out is you know he should have used it uh, mm. to help the homeless yeah. population. Yeah, we don't control what the senators <laughs> say, Ray. I know you know that. Uh, and uh, you know, if the board approves a performance evaluation that includes a pay raise, then of course we can report on that. I mean, it is what they approved it. And so do you think you deserve it? Because, it, I mean, uh, you've, you've made the case for your performance on this job. And, I mean, are you kind of like a little butthurt maybe that now you're not getting the raise? Not at all, Chris. Um, you know, you guys have made it very clear, the people in the media, that I make uh, a decent amount of money. I'm yeah. happy with it. Yeah. Uh, again, the timing of this, uh, while it appear may appear suspect simply because of the pandemic, um, it's 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 primarily because just Thursday, the day before the board meeting, we had an exit interview with the OPA, and concerns were brought to our attention about the board not ratifying uh, personnel actions and uh, and and personnel or in per personnel evaluation. So. We just cleaned it up, and I, I'm hoping when the OPA releases the audit in about a week, uh, he, he assured us it was going to be released before the end of the fiscal year, that it will clear things up, that everything that we've done at Gora was above board. In fact, I believe we may be one of the few, if maybe the only one, that actually is so transparent that we put it before the board to be ratified and so the media is able to to know what's going on and for the senators to say well we didn't know any of these things well not true because we do submit a report monthly and we're never late and we're never we all never right miss ray congratulations to the gora board thank you but at the end of the day a raise was approved right uh at the end of the day they approved a increment but that but, yes. So know, yes. Yes. So, right. so Ten thousand or more other GovGuam employees. Yeah, that, but Ray, there's not... a, there's a big difference between you know Joe Cruz or Oseva Cruz who's sweeping DOE and gets an outstanding evaluation and gets their measly three percent uh, increment. You're just playing at a much higher level. So to compare yourself to these rank and file classified employees, I'm a little offended by that. On their behalf. Well well, the, the, there's more liability on, on uh, you know, for, for me to assume this position, Chris. I mean, I, I sign about, uh, I, I'm responsible for about $127 million, uh, including pass-through federal accounts. And, and ultimately, the buck stops with me. I have to sign those documents. And, you know, no, I'm not comparing myself to somebody else in, in a classified employee in Gov Guam that doesn't have that kind of liability. I'm just saying there's a reason why the, the pay at Gura is, is at that level and why the board felt it was necessary to, 
to pay us accordingly. I mean, uh, I, I don't think somebody making eighty, ninety thousand dollars in Guam has that kind of responsibility and is going to be held to account. If I sign something or if I approve something that's uh, that's uh, inappropriate, um, you know, everybody knows what happens at Gora when you're um, when you're stepping out of line. Uh, it, you get prosecuted. So I'm pretty certain what we done, what the board did was, uh, was, uh, in accordance with law and the audit will show that when it comes out. And, you know, if this legislature wants to hold an oversight hearing, I actually welcome that. You're not going to hear that from too many, uh, top positions in the government. I welcome it because we will respond to all their concerns, but right now they're just trying to get reelected. So a lot of the things that they're saying are not even close to being true. It's pure, I mean, it's blatant lies. I'm not the highest paid director. I'm not even close to being the highest paid director. Just top 10. Made- yeah. I, I mean, Ray, it just, I mean, keep on please, but it just, it's not sounding too good out here on your end. Uh, but well, let me let me go ask to the back to the raise, right? So you're not getting the raise. It was approved by the board retroactive to January 2020. So when this whole pandemic, I mean, God, I hope it blows over. Are you then going to get the raise? And is it then going to be applied retroactively to January 2020? I that would be up to my board. I, I don't I don't get to decide what I get paid. The board does. Uh, based on what they passed Friday, I, I presume so, but again, it's entirely up to the board. I can tell you right now what we, what the board approved Friday, there was, there was no ill intent and there's no, um, th- there was no mindset to, to process anything during difficult times. We recognize that the timing is bad, but we also recognize that the OPA was going to re- release an audit of Gura within the next week or so. And we wanted to make sure in, in good faith to show the OPA that we, we've done everything that they had concerns about. And it was just as simple as that. Did the reporter ask me that? No, they just ran the story and, you know, things got blown out of proportion, but until I get that pay raise, I don't think anyone should be crying foul. And then until the, and the, when the legislature, uh, when you know, when the governor decides to appoint someone at the Guam Housing and Urban mm-hmm. Renewal Authority, feels is competent down at the legislature, then so be it. You Maybe you can figure out how to do a better job than I can. But right now, that's not the case. So, you know, my apologies. But, you know, I got paid uh, a lot of money because I, I think our, our organization is doing extremely well. A lot better than what's going on at the legislature, that's for sure. And I don't want to get baited into, you know, what the, the debate between the administration. We, we don't even get a penny from the Guam legislature. And everyone that understands federal funds will understand that, you know, and HUD has come out and threatened to recapture $2.7 million initially. Now we got another $7 million increase to our Section 8 program. And officially they've told me if we're going to lose about 4 to $5 million of that because of COVID and we're not able to spend those monies expeditiously. Our board has been very proactive in trying to figure out ways uh, together with management to spend down on these funds. And every, if I don't know whether you guys have ever managed federal programs. Well, I managed uh, over $100 million. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you don't spend the money, <laughs> it goes to the federal coffers. So, you know, hey, what am I, what can I say? The reporter ran that story, said I got a pay raise. No, I didn't. Uh, but, you know, the reporter doesn't know how to, how Gora operates and neither does Tello Taitsukui, neither does um, anyone at the Guam legislature. Only Ray. All right. Well, thanks, Ray, for uh, sharing uh, your side of the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why I wanted you, to get you, you on, You said you didn't get a pay raise, but the board approved the pay raise and they had to do it to make sure, you know, everything's on the up and up and, you know, you got an audit coming down. So I guess it is what it is, yeah. huh? <laughs> I, I beg of everyone to wait for the audit. If there's an audit finding, then there'll be egg in my face. If there's an audit finding on my part, then there's egg in my face. But I, I'm pretty... I, I, you know, I, we'll I, wait. I, yeah, you're right. We'll wait for the audit. But at the end of the day, like we said, you were approved for a raise, an increment. And that's basically, you know, what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, as was everyone who received a, a satisfactory and above performance evaluation. And, yeah. So you know like i said earlier to say that i'm the only one and the deputy are the only ones no the entire government of Guam did and the legislature approved that again but that's, the there's a big difference so they all the- got a raise uh, all all the people that are doing such an awesome job 
I'm not aware of a single uh, person who got a satisfactory performance evaluation or higher mm -hmm. that did not get a pay adjustment, not a raise, a pay increment. Okay. Okay. So, right. We're going to let uh, you know, Lieutenant Governor. So I guess we should go ask. Yeah, we can ask uh, Josh, who all got a pay now pay adjustments. No, he, he's talking about the salary increments for the government employees. That you're, you're correct in that, Ray, that they were allowed for the fiscal year. But I'm just saying it's a little different to compare you, who makes 153000 you know, managing all the federal programs and whatnot, versus a janitor or, you know, a classified nurse or whatever. And, and that, but there's Police a lot officer. of people. Police officer. And, and me and a lot, of, a lot of classified people that make more than I do as well. That get that probably received their increments because they got a uh, satisfactory and above. So, you know, it, it is what it is. That's the way the government operates. You you got to you you, you, you got to pay people their worth, mm -hmm. or you know, in order to retain them, or you you know, you're going to lose them to the private sector. So, if you didn't get a raise, would we lose you to the private sector? Like, what private sector uh, company would you go work for if you didn't get a raise? That would pay you one hundred fifty three thousand dollars. That's crazy. You know, I'm not going to go down that road. But You just um, tried to go down that road. You just said that, oh, if we don't pay the people what they're worth, then we lose them to the private sector. But I just don't ever see that. I, people say that all the time. Oh, if we don't pay the chief of staff $120,000, we're going to lose them to the private sector. Like, really? What uh, private sector is going to pay this dude 120000 just because he's related to somebody or because he campaigned hard? It's not real. Sorry. It is what it is. But you know one thing yeah. I love about you, Ray, is you will come on and you will just, you'll answer. And, you know, it might not be what we want to hear, but yeah. you're saying the stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. No, Chris, let, let me close by saying this. Um, and I'm probably going to get in a little bit of trouble for saying this. But there was actually a recommendation by federal authorities to put me here at Gura. The governor didn't have to comply with that. But there was, in fact, a recommendation for me to, to come here so that I can clean up this mess. And if I can just state for the record, and I'm going to have a lot of people up in arms because I said this, th there's a reason why there were charges that were levied against the previous board and the executive director who pled guilty and the previous counsel and actually two other attorneys involved with Gura who ended up paying back the federal government. And I have proof of all of this. And if you want to FOIA it, I'll give it to you. You don't need to FOIA it, I'll give right it on. to you. Right but the bottom line is I was put here to clean up this mess, so I'm not going to do anything that would put me in harm's way when really I was the, I was, I'm the reason why there was a federal investigation of the Guam Housing Authority and there was a, a raid and all the files were taken and they built a case. And unfortunately, the, the new AG, you know, for some reason, uh, the cases were dropped, but there's still cases before both civilly and, and criminally in in federal court but i'm uh, because of my relationship with the federal government i'm not going to do anything that would put me that would betray them and put them put me in harm's way or any of my staff here and you know it is what it is uh, you don't believe me hey um, go talk to the feds all right thanks a lot ray appreciate it ray stay thanks. safe stay safe wash your hands have a good day you bye too bye. okay bye Let's let that marinate for a second there. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, guys. I just like, man, let's let's go ahead and bring Lieutenant Governor Josh, who would, you know, probably was just thinking, I'm just, just gonna go on Chris and Sabrina's show and just give him a little update. And now Ray Tapasny had to go and mess up the bed for you. And now you gotta So, Lieutenant uh, Governor, who in the 